Alright, so today I wanted to go through a common kind of drill with HTML, CSS, JavaScript, just a little bit of CSS. And it's around creating your own quiz application using jQuery, JavaScript, and basic HTML. And I want to demystify the complexity of this. Now, the first thing that we want to do is that we don't really want to get to the point where we have too much HTML, too much CSS, right? So we're gonna start very simple here. We're gonna build a quiz, and this quiz is going to be what color is said Pokemon, right? And we're gonna start simple with just four Pokemon, four colors, four questions, we're done, right? And there's three different areas of our application. There is the start page, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and give that a div with the class of start. Okay, and that's gonna have an H1 that's just Pokemon quiz, right? And then we say welcome, blah, 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 and probably an anchor tag, right? So start quiz, okay? And that's it for that, right? So now uh, we have an area where we actually have our quiz. So we'll have a div for that. And that will have an H2 for each question title. There will be a list of choices Right, so we'll have each of these, um, and they'll say something like, you know, uh, choice, 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 right? And then an anchor tag to submit our answer, okay? So we'll be able to select our answer, then submit our answer. And then finally, we have our summary screen. Summary screen. And this will just say, congrats, you scored X out of Y correct. Okay. And then another anchor tag, restart quiz. Okay, easy as that. Now with our CSS, we're going to do something very simple and just say, look, quiz and summary, those shouldn't be shown by default. So we'll just set their display from block to none and we won't see them. The only other CSS will need is for later. We will have a selected state for our choices and we'll just set it to yellow. That's pretty easy. Okay. Now, before I get started with uh, jQuery or JavaScript, I need to add jQuery, right? So I just go ahead and put that in. And now I can jump into my JavaScript. Okay. So I'm going to need a couple of global variables right off the top. We'll have score is zero. And um, let's see, what else are we going to do? We're going to do current question is zero. So they'll just track the index where we are in the questions. And then questions will be an array of objects. Okay, we'll just do each object will have a title. What color is Squirtle? All right. Um, it'll have a property called answers, which will be, you know, yellow blue, whoops, yellow, blue, orange, green. You notice all my typos. <laughs> and then a property called correct. That just correlates to the index of which answer is correct. So in this case, Squirtle is blue. The correct answer is one. Okay. Let's just go ahead and duplicate this. Two, three, four. Okay. Instead of Squirtle here, we'll do Bulbasaur. Instead of Squirtle here, we'll do Pikachu, and then we'll do Charmander, okay? All right, so we've got our four, four starters. Let's go ahead and change these indexes, okay? And two, all right? So hopefully that makes sense. Start at index zero, one, two, three. If you've worked with arrays before, you understand how that works, okay? So now we've got our variable set up. We're going to have our document dot ready, right? And this is where we'll put all of our event listeners. And then we're going to have some functions. We're going to think about the functionality of this quiz. We're going to have function um, start quiz, right? We're going to have a function to show question. We're going to have a function for check answer. Uh, we're going to have a function for show summary. That's it for right now. Um, 
we can add additional functionality to this. It can grow. Okay. And I like organizing my code this way, where I've got all my globals up top, my event listeners in the middle, and then my functions at the bottom. So let's start with the easiest one. Um, inside the start, I have an anchor tag. When I click on that, right, I want to go ahead and pass in the event, prevent default, for sure, uh, and make sure I've got that there. And then when I start it, the first thing I'm going to do is hide the start area, then show the quiz area. Okay. And I think it's important to always be checking your work. So start, there we go, hides that, shows that. Easy enough. First one done. Now, once it shows it, we need to actually show a question. So if we think about it, there really wasn't much to start quiz. I don't mind keeping this here, so I'm going to actually remove that function. And this is an important concept here. Look, I don't have everything written out on a piece of paper. I just start coding. And if something doesn't make sense or I need to change something, it's okay to change it on the fly, right? And um, to learn as you go and adapt your code as you go. That's perfectly okay. All right, so let's look at how we would actually show a question. So I would want to do that as soon as I click, right? Then I'm going to call show question function. So let's write that out. Well, we have this array of questions and we have this index that'll let us keep track of what question we're on, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and create a variable that only exists inside of here called question. How do I get access to that? Well, I look at the questions array and then I use the current question variable that we've created, which represents zero. So we're getting the first question. Then right off the bat, okay, inside the quiz on the H2, let's set the text of that H2 to question.title, right? Remember our properties up here, right? Let's test that out when we start the quiz. What color is Squirtle? That's the first question, right? Now, uh, I don't need the def dummy answers that I have in there, but you know th those answers will be left over after each question anyways. So let me just go ahead and clear that out, okay? And then now I'm just gonna do a simple for loop, var i is zero, while i is less than question.answers.length i++, plus plus. okay? And now for each of these uh, answer choices, I'm going to go ahead and target that quiz UL, and I'm going to append to it an li. Um, let's actually do this using template strings because we've got quite a lot to write here. So we'll have an li, and that li is going to have an id of, and we're going to do i, right? So that way it has an id um, of 0, 1, 2, or 3 to represent the answer. Let me I'm pretty sure JSBen supports template strings. I guess we'll find out, right? Um, and then inside of here, we will have uh, question.answers, square bracket i. And so that will be the color, right? Then we'll close our li, right? And that's the end of our append. Let's test it out. There we go. So this line cleared out the li's that were already there. And then this line appended them in. Okay, if we inspect them, we can see that they have the IDs 0, 1, 2, and 3. That's exactly what we want. We'll need that later. Okay, in my CSS, I will go ahead in here and say quiz LIs. Uh, well, quiz UL should be list style none and padding 0. All right, that's fine by me for now. I'm not worried about the look and feel, right? So that's there. Um, the for loop is there. This is all good. Why are you giving me an error? Expect an identifier instead, so. I'm assuming this probably has something to do with me using template strings in JSBin. So it's like it works, but it doesn't want to work. <laughs> So let's just use regular old concatenation to keep this from constantly complaining. See how much easier template strings are? It's not the worst problem in the world to have, right? Now you get to learn both ways, the ES5 and the ES6 way. Let's double check, make sure that works. Still working, great. That's it for show question. That's all we have to do.
right? But now uh, I'm going to have an event listener. Now this time I want to put it on those LIs because I want to basically toggle the class selected on them, right? Um, and I don't want to put it directly on the LI because those LIs change after the page loads, right? So I'll put it on the quiz UL since that doesn't really change, it's only its contents. And we're going to do an on click event, right? So we have to do event delegation here, not an event listener. Okay, what are we clicking on? Well, your LI children. And let's go ahead and call the callback function. We don't need anything with the event for this. Um, <clears throat> the first thing that we'll do is we will say this toggle class highlight. Okay. And if we check this out, that's going to give us, oh, that's right. I called it selected. My bad. So that's going to give us that background color yellow that we added over here in our CSS. Right. Easy enough. The only problem right now is it toggles it, meaning we can turn it on and off. That's not ideal. Like ideally you want to like select something. Um, let's also go into our CSS here and say quiz li should have a cursor of pointer that tells the user these are clickable, right? Okay, so we actually need some logic here. We're not actually toggling the class. Um, we're really adding the class. We're never removing it. But what we will do is whenever they do click on an LI, we will go ahead and say, hey, anything that has the class selected, remove that class selected. And so this makes it act more like a radio button. In the same way that with a radio button, you can't unclick. Once you've clicked an answer, you can change your answer, but you can't unclick, right? So now if I click on yellow, nothing happens. And that's intentional because basically it's removing the class and then adding it right back. Right, so it seems like nothing's happening, but it's just too quick for your eyes to see. But watch this if I change the answer, see it removed the class from yellow, now it changed the class to blue. Okay, so this allows me to change my answer. I'm not submitting my answer just by clicking on it. 